This is a recording for Occupational English Test and the text is held at Med City International Academy, Kannur, on 25th March 2022. The candidate name is Alina Thomas, the candidate number is 43210. Interlocutor is Drishya and the interlocutor number is 12345. Role play number one, profession, nursing. Good morning, Alina. Good morning. Can I have your identification, please? Yes. So, thank you. Thank you. This is a test of your English knowledge, not your professional knowledge. So, speak naturally. Okay. Okay. So, this is the role play card. Mm -hmm. You have three minutes preparation time and your preparation time starts now. Okay, Alina, so this is the end of your preparation time and you have five minutes of your role play. Okay. Okay. Good morning, Angelina. Good morning. How are you feeling today? I'm okay. All right. So my name is Alina Thomas. I'm mm -hmm. the nurse on duty today. Okay. And uh, from your case note, I understand that uh, you are posted for a surgery, CABG. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but you seem a little worried. May I know the reason behind that? Uh, I am worried. Actually, the doctor informed me about CABG, mm -hmm. but I have no idea about the procedure, so mm -hmm. I'm a little worried, yeah. Don't worry, Angelina. I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. I'll explain you in detail regarding the procedure. Okay. Okay. So, I hope that you know your you know regarding your diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It's CAD. It's coronary artery disease. Okay. Okay. This coronary artery is the artery which supplies blood to your heart. Mm -hmm. So, it has multiple blocks. So, your heart is not getting enough blood for its functioning. Okay. Okay. So for that we are doing the surgery. It's CABG, mm -hmm. coronary artery bypass grafting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this procedure, we are taking a blood vessel from another part of the body and bypassing this blocked artery. Okay. okay. I see. This is the procedure, and it's an open heart surgery. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is that clear? Yeah, it is. All right. So, I would like to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is this the first time you are experiencing these kind of chest pains? No, it's the second time. Second time. Okay. So, do you have any uh, medical illness like hypertension or diabetes mellitus? Yeah, I was diagnosed with hypertension five years ago. Okay. So, are you on any medicines? Yes, I am. All right. Uh, so, I hope uh, you are clear regarding the procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any concerns? Yeah, you mentioned it is an open heart surgery. Yes. And uh, one of my friend underwent angioplasty mm -hmm. uh, and he was diagnosed with the same condition. So, mm -hmm. what about that? Yeah, actually this angioplasty is we are doing in uh, minor blocks. Okay, mm -hmm. as I said, you have multiple blocks. Okay. So we cannot do this angioplasty uh, for your condition mm -hmm. right now. Okay. So uh, it's the best option uh, to do CABG. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the best option for your current condition. Okay. So I suggest, I strongly suggest you to undergo the CABG. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are doing this CABG, mm -hmm. uh, the chances of uh, next heart attack is lowered mm -hmm. and you will get uh, improvement in your symptoms. Okay, so you are telling me CABG is the ultimate solution for my condition? Yeah, this is the best option available for your current condition. If you are doing this angioplasty, mm -hmm. the chances of repeating the procedure is high. 
Okay, as I you get have it. multiple blows. Okay, okay. okay. Clear? Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yeah, it is. All right. So I would like to give you some advice regarding the lifestyle modification. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, fine. Uh, so I would like to ask you a few questions before. Mid City OET app. Learn OET listening, reading, writing, speaking, and OET related grammar at your own convenience. Download the app now. That. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of diet do you prefer? Um, I would like to eat vegetarian mm -hmm. and non-vegetarian, but mm -hmm. since I'm kind of busy, I would prefer usually ready meals. Ready meals. Mm -hmm. uh, are you doing any exercises? No, I don't. I'm quite busy for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I understand that. What kind of job do you are doing? Uh, I'm an engineer. Engineer. Mm -hmm. All right. So you must be very busy. Yeah, I am. All right. So one personal question: mm -hmm. uh, Are you uh, are you a smoker or uh, do you have any habits of smoking or uh, mm. drinking? Yeah, you know what kind of job mine is. And when I'm stressed, yeah, maybe I take a puff or two. And whenever I go for a party, yeah, mm -hmm. a drink maybe. All right. Thank you for the information, Saint Julina. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we can discuss regarding the diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. You told me that uh, you are taking food from ready meals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I suggest you to cook yourself okay. at home. I know you are a busy person. I mm -hmm. don't have much time for cooking and all. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, just try. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, whenever you're cooking yourself, you can add more vegetables and uh, fruits in your diet. Okay. Okay. Is that possible for you? Yeah, it is. All right. Next, uh, we can discuss regarding the exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, you are not doing any exercises, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just try to do some exercise like uh, walking and all. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can do it in the morning, like morning walk. Okay. You can just do it for 30 minutes. That sounds fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I hope that you can adjust your schedule based on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, fine. So next, uh, I would like to. Okay, Alina. So your role play ends now. Thank you. Thank you. So this is my feedback or take on Alina's performance. Now I'm going to assess her through all the different parameters of OET speaking. So let's begin with linguistic criteria first. And under linguistic criteria, the first assessment factor is intelligibility. Intelligibility simply means how easily can you understand a person. So we have all the features of pronunciation under intelligibility. I would say throughout she performed quite well, um, except in certain areas where there were serious pronunciation issues. Um, especially what I can bring to your notice is a common error I've seen many students make. In a sentence where she said, supplies blood to your heart, and that's the right way to pronounce it, she used the term supplies blood to your heart, which is H-U-R-T. Now, heart is different from heart. Heart is H-E-A-R-T, which is the, the organ that pumps blood in our body. But heart, H-U-R-T, means we are in pain or there is an injury that has happened. So. If we do not pronounce certain words correctly, that could convey a totally different meaning. So ensure that we do not uh, convey anything ambiguous, uh, we do not encourage any misunderstanding and instead the pronunciation of all the words are clear. If you look at fluency, Alina was fluent throughout. She was slow paced while speaking and that really helped when it comes to explaining medical procedures, medical condition. So the kind of pace that she has chosen will easily allow a patient to follow her conversation. The next assessment factor is appropriateness of language. Now look at the sentence that she used. I hope you know regarding your diagnosis. I would say the term diagnosis is outrageous to use to a patient. Remember we have to depend on layman language, which means using simpler terms while talking to the patient. So instead of saying, I hope you know regarding your diagnosis, um, after avoiding the medical term, a more simpler version would be something like, I hope you're aware of your condition. Avoid using difficult technical terms. And uh, through the later half of the conversation, she also asked the patient, are you a smoker? Now that wouldn't be um, accepted. 
Now remember, you need to avoid such questions. Are you a smoker? Are you a drinker? Uh, forget on using adjectives there as in uh, you're trying to uh, term the person as, uh, as a smoker or a drinker. Labeling a person. Avoid it as much as possible. Instead, a different version of saying it would be, do you smoke or drink? And that is a much better usage. Looking at the fourth factor under linguistic criteria, we have resources of grammar and expression. Mid City OET app. Learn OET listening, reading, writing, speaking, and OET related grammar at your own convenience. Download the app now. Now, grammar structures need to be corrected. There were certain grammar areas where she has to focus, especially when it comes to the usage of tenses. Now, she said, is this the first time you're experiencing chest pain? You are experiencing chest pain is present continuous. That means it is something that is happening at the moment of the conversation. But chest pain was something that has already happened. And because of the chest pain, the patient was evaluated, assessed, and that's when um, the requirement of a surgery was found. So this has to be used in the past. So what is a corrected version of this? Was that the first time that you had experienced chest pain? Was that the first time? We're already talking about, you know, a past incident. Was that the first time you had experienced chest pain? So, Resource of grammar and expression, she definitely has to focus on certain grammatical constructions. So when you speak as well, ensure that you use the right tense forms. Moving on to the clinical communication criteria, let's look at the first factor, which is relationship building. Now, under relationship building, I would say there was quite a good start to the conversation with clear self-introduction and phrases to show the association she has with the patient. For example, she said, from your case notes, I know you're posted for CABG surgery, but you look a little worried. May I know why? Now here, the nurse has used information from the, um, from the role play card and said, from your case notes, I know you're posted for the surgery. That shows probably I'm talking to you for the first time, but I know your case. You're not a total stranger to me. And uh, can you see the way she initiated the conversation by saying, but you look a little worried, may I know why? So probably the first task there is to answer the patient's questions. Now, if you need to answer the patient's questions, you need to clearly um, uh, encourage the patient to ask you a question. So how do you do that? You probe them. You probe them by saying that you look a little bit worried, may I know why? And that is when uh, the, the patient would start describing his, his or her condition and say, can you explain this to me? So I would say there was a good start to the conversation. Um, and she throughout also showed attentive behavior. So she was like, okay. Hmm. And in certain areas, she was repeating the patient's response. So that clearly explains or uh, brings forth the idea that I'm being very attentive as a nurse while listening to the patient. Now, understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective, that's probably one area where she could have worked a little bit more. So when the patient says, you know, my friend had a similar condition, but he was, uh, he had to undergo angioplasty and why an open heart surgery for me? So the patient has already expressed certain fears or confusion. So could have used that in the conversation saying, okay, what is the reason for that confusion? And then after explaining probably she could have added something like, I hope that is clear. Now you have a better understanding of why your friend had undergone an angioplasty, but in your case, why this is most important. So that kind of a connection did not happen. So that is one area where definitely Elena has to work on. The next factor under clinical communication criteria is providing structure. So there were areas where she was using clear signposting. I would like to ask you certain questions or this is the first time you're experiencing chest pain, you know, those kinds of things. So signposting where she's introducing what you're going to talk about, like I need to ask some personal questions. These are all helpful when it comes to providing a logical sequence or order or structure to your conversation. And when it comes to information gathering, I would say she was asking most of the right questions like, do you have any medical condition like hypertension or diabetes mellitus? That's very clear. Instead of just asking a question like, do you have any medical condition? That might be quite difficult for the patient to answer. So if you give them options saying like hypertension 
or diabetes it becomes so much easier for the patient to connect to that answer and you know um, check if that patient has a similar condition and answer accordingly or another question where she asked are you on any medicines these are all good questions um, I would say uh, open-ended questions uh, helping the, the nurse gather more information from the patient and even while giving information which is the last factor where she was quite slow she was using simple terms and the explanations were quite short now sometimes students get carried off and as a nurse they might explain in detail at length which is not required so keep it simple keep it short like she said I would like to give you some advice regarding lifestyle modification is that okay so before giving information she took permission which is a very good attitude as a nurse so these are certain of my findings based on their performance if you have noted any other aspects you're free to add to these comments and I hope you can learn from the sample speaking good luck with your OET speaking download MedCity OET app available on Play Store and App Store